Hello friends, welcome to the video. Today we're going to be looking at setting up scroll snapping inside of Webflow, this time just using CSS. Let's do it. So recently I was doing a redesign for the Anansi Creative website. For this, I wanted to set up some scroll snapping, and previously I taught how to do that using Scrollify. But there's two main reasons that I wanted to find something else to use. So if we go over to their website and we start scrolling around, one thing that we'll see right away is some shakiness or stuttering, hesitation. Really, when I look at this, it doesn't look that professional. Now in some of my applications and applications that I've seen others do, they've gotten a much smoother result, but the fact remains that this is very much a possibility, that we get a very shaky looking scroll and it doesn't feel very natural. So this method really lives up to the nickname scroll hijacking. It doesn't really feel like you're still controlling the website entirely. The second reason that I wanted to go with something else is we are loading in an external library. And while this one isn't particularly large, we can shave just that little bit off of our load time if we have something that's just a few lines of code built directly into the site. So I think we're just gonna jump into it and build this. Right here, we have an empty document. And just quickly, I wanna explain what we're doing. We're going to need some kind of a wrapper or a container for this to sit in. We could set the body as this container, but my preference is to leave the body element completely alone and not make any adjustments to it. This container is going to take up the entire viewport and then everything else is going to scroll inside of it. And I think this will make sense in just a moment. To build this, we'll go Command K and then drag in a div. And we're going to call this scroll snap wrapper. So let's set the size. And very important, the overflow needs to be set to scroll. Once we have that, we can bring in some sections. So let's make one of these section one. Just give me a moment to style this and we'll go over the functionality. So overall, this is pretty simple. All of our sections are set to 100 viewport height and the wrapper for them is also set to 100 viewport height. So because this is custom CSS and not JavaScript, we can actually use an HTML embed and view the custom CSS right inside of the designer as well as preview. So we can go drag in an embed I'm going to set this to display none, otherwise it may all of a sudden show the code in text at the bottom or top of your web page, which can cause problems. So we'll set this to display none. Usually I'll write my code out in Visual Studio just to make sure that I have everything written properly, but in this case it's really simple, so I'll write it directly in the embed. So we need a style tag. And the first element that we're going to affect is the scroll snap wrapper. For this demonstration, we're going to use the mandatory setting. However, I will leave a link in the description to an article where you can learn about all of the possibilities with this property. You'll notice that this is highlighted in red to say that it's not a valid property, but this is just a mistake inside of Webflow. It very much is a valid property. So we'll set this to Y, which is the axis, and mandatory. Next, 
we're going to apply this to our sections. And for this, we're going to go scroll snap align and we'll set this to start. Now, because we have this as a 100% of the viewport section, then it aligning to start, center, or end doesn't make a difference. However, if you have something that is larger than the viewport, you will need to decide where you want it to snap to. So we can just copy this and paste it twice and save and close and let's see what we get. So as you can see, this is a lot smoother. We can scroll part way and then hold it and scroll back, or we can scroll all the way to go to the next section. We can scroll really fast and skip sections. And so overall, this doesn't hijack the user's scroll the same way that Scrollify does. This still feels a lot more natural, but you're still making sure that when they when they release their trackpad or have scrolled with the mouse wheel, that they're still in the place that you want them to be, which is looking at a full screen section. Hey friends, I forgot to mention, on my GitHub page, I do have a little snippet of code that you can use to disable the scroll bars on this as well. So there it is. I would actually say, I think this method is a little bit more easy actually than the Scrollify plugin. And it's going to benefit your load times. It feels a lot more natural and it's just buttery smooth, looks fantastic, much more professional. Once again, thank you everyone for watching. If you did like the video, I would super appreciate if you give us a like. If you want to comment, ask a question, I will most likely answer it. And if you really enjoyed it, perhaps give us a subscribe. That's going to help us get this content out to more of the community and we can benefit them. That's all for now. See you in the next one.